Tony, you better send someone to carry his luggage. Cody, you and Red bring the truck around. Inspector Vickers. Please, Mr. Vickers. I'm here as a civilian. That's well, good to see you, Lieutenant. I'd uh, like to meet Stony Burke. Mr. Burke? My pleasure, Mr. Vickers. Those uh, spurs you're wearing, they're short, aren't they, with a small row? Yes, sir. These are bronc spurs. Well, don't tell me you're a bronc rider. Well, takes all kinds. Stony's a rodeo contestant. We've called on his services as an expert. Webster! You've got to see this. You mind if my assistant takes some photographs? No, excuse me. James Webster, Rocky Burke. Stony Burke. Stony Burke, of course. No memory at all. Well, I'll uh, go check on the luggage. <laughs> well, I stepped on his toes. That big hat and square jaw, he's right out of the classics. He'll get used to you. I'm afraid I got bad news. Gordon? Yes. Is he dead? Yes, that is bad news. We tried to contact your plane, but you're already halfway across the country. An air control told us we must well wait. Do the newspapers know? We're not over the wire services about a uh, half hour ago. You're going to be swamped with calls. Politicians, diplomats, even governments. Remember the headlines last year when they thought he was killed in that plane crash? They want to know what happened. We've never had anything this important. Uh, I'll need your help. You've got it. Here you are, gentlemen. A choice assortment of custom match luggage. <clears throat> hey, Stoney, you don't mind if I act a scout cap for these good and generous folks, do you? Just so you don't go scrounging for tips. Well, uh, listen, I mean, you don't have to make like I'm a groveling in the streets. Uh, watch out for my typewriter, would you? Oh, yes, sir. I'll sit right here next to these soft leather goods, sir. And it's a pleasure to be of service, sir, and there's no charge of any kind. Putting a car at your disposal. I hired officially. Oh, yes. Yeah. The department's okay my calling you in as weapons expert. Gordon Lucas was a personal friend. I won't take any fee for my services. They're allowed for expenses. No fee, no expenses. Now, your telegram mentioned the neck wound. That's what killed him. You'd think the doctors could have handled it. Well, it hit close to the juggler van. Peculiar way to die. Very peculiar. That's why I sent for you. Your wire stated specifically that it was an accident. Yes, sir. It was an accident. Uh, so Tony, would you ride with us? I'm going to stop off at the hospital. Sure. Uh, Webster, I'll meet you at the hotel. Oh, and order some tea. He said he's going to meet us for tea? Have you no manners, you Harry Oat? Assist this gentleman to the forward compartment. You feeling OK? Librarian. <laughs> Dr. Sullivan. Lieutenant Bolin. This is Inspector Vickers. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Vickers. Doctor. How are you? Stony Burke. Doctor. How are you? Mr. Vickers is the expert I spoke to you about. He's just flown in from the East Coast, and we'd appreciate it if you'd show him the death weapon just as you extracted it. I'm very sorry, Lieutenant. I know you left explicit instructions, and so did I, but uh, it's been destroyed. Destroyed? Disposed of with the surgical waste in the incinerator. I issued instructions to save it for microscopic examination, but apparently the orderly just didn't receive the order. Did you see it, Dr. Sullivan? I performed the extraction. As I understand it, Gordon Lucas was struck in the throat. 
Yes, the dorsal branch of the jugular. And you're satisfied that was the cause of death? No question about it. The cause of death was an arrow. Could you describe it? The kind of wood, the tip, or the feathers? It was unusual wood, very hard. I couldn't cut it with a surgical scissors, had to use a bone saw. Would you say it was hickory or oak? I'm not too familiar with types of wood. It was cedar wood. Did you examine it, Mr. Burke? No, sir, but it's a kind used in specialty acts at rodeos. The Indians put on trick shot exhibitions. Is that what this was? Yes, sir, it was an accident, pure and simple. I'd like you to take a look and uh, see for yourself. See for myself? The local station covered the rodeo on television. We have the tape playback. You mean I can see Gordon die? Yes. Extraordinary. The Great Southwest Stock Show is the largest annual rodeo in the state. Paid attendance goes over 10,000 a performance. Here's a grand entry. Are all those people contestants? No, sir. Grand entry is a kind of a spectacular parade we put on before the events. Contestants, uh, trick riders, clowns, anybody that can stay up on a horse and carry a flag can enter. Oh, yes, cowboys and Indians. Are they the real thing? <laughs> you better believe it. What tribe? Navajos, Comanches. Oh, of course, the Athabascan grouping. Well, I wouldn't know about that. I know Gordon was a world traveler. How did he end up here? A lot of VIPs in national politics keep ranches mid-state. They like to fly visiting dignitaries out here from Washington, New York. I hope you don't mind my asking, Mr. Vickers, but how come you uh, know Mr. Gordon Lucas? You might say we were in international police work, and we spent some time in the Orient. We were all in the same unit in the OSS. No? You in the OSS? As you say, Mr. Burke, it takes all kinds. Hmm. I admit I didn't dash around with a trench knife between my teeth. He was in command of the Ordnance and Demolition Unit. Mr. Vickers used to collect guns by the scrap ton. Oh, there, there's uh, Gordon next to the VIP. Who were those other people with him? Well, that's a delegation from the United Nations observing some of our Western customs. Soaking up Americana. Uh, the uh, Chung Chin minister, daughter, wife. As I recall, Gordon spoke several languages fluently. Yes, the Chung Chin minister hired him as an advisor. He helped stop some student riots and worked on the Far Eastern Unification Treaty. We had the station edit the tape to a minute before the accident. Stoney's the expert on rodeo. He'll tell you what's happening. Well, here's the last of the Saddlebron contestants. He didn't do too well, did he? No, sir, that was me. Oh, sorry. Well, as soon as I hauled out of there, the uh, stock contractor brought on one of the specialty acts. These Indians call themselves the Comanche War Party. Uh, they've been working rodeos for oh, eight or 10 years. Who hires them? Stock contractor, Cal Bristol. You met his nephew, uh, Cody, out at the airport. the accident.
make it, but... The man who fired the arrow, where is he? I'm holding him down at the station. Anything out of line? No, just a routine booking. Accidental homicide. You say you know him? Well, I've met him. I know the old man who owns the act, and, uh... I know the girl. She's his daughter. Your friend, Cal Bristol, hired? That's right. Stoney, we're not accusing anyone. You got something on your mind, Mr. Vickers? Well, you've got to admit it's a peculiar accident. He lined up, aimed, and missed the target by about 30 feet. Look, what you saw was an accident, pure and simple. You've got 10,000 witnesses now. You can fish around all you want, but I'm telling you, these things happen. Not like this. Worse than this. Bronx plow through fences. Baseballs come down and hit people on the head. Race cars spin off the track. Lieutenant, I'd like to question the man you're holding. What's the good of that? I think I can find out something. I'll tell you what you're going to find out. You're going to find out he's scared stiff. What's he got to be scared of? People out to find trouble. I don't mean to get personal, Mr. Vickers, but... Uh, you've been examining people around here like freaks out of Borneo. Mr. Burke, I spent seven months with an anthropological expedition in Borneo, researching the use of native poisons in blow darts. And I can assure you, there is nothing in the entire Malay archipelago remotely like you. You are not a freak. But in my world, which happens to be a quiet university in a quiet town in Connecticut, you are as rare as a fossil giraffe. Now, if I happen to offend you by being curious about your big hat and your pointed boots and your unique mode of expression, that is what is known in the Wild West as tough. You through? Stoney. And granted, I'm a meddling busybody out to stir up trouble. Is there any other reason a suspect should fear a routine questioning? Can't you see you're already calling him a suspect? Perhaps that's because I suspect him. You don't even know him. I intend to get to know him. All right, Mr. Vickers, I'm asking you to let it go. Why? Well, maybe it doesn't mean anything to you, but he's an Indian. Don't tell me people out here are still fighting Indians. Look it up in your history book. Sixty years ago, this whole section was part of the Comanche Nation. The territory wars were fought right out in that desert where your plane came in. Their whole families, good, uh, solid people with the latest cars and TV sets who lost a grandfather or a great uncle not too many years back, and they don't forget. You actually believe there's still enough prejudice left to cause trouble? Mr. Vickers, if there's any prejudice, it can cause trouble. Stoney, you'll get a fair hearing. I hope so, Lieutenant. I can appreciate your feelings, Mr. Burke. To you, it's an accident which occurred in front of thousands of eyewitnesses. The rodeo people are your friends, and you want us to close the book and let the whole thing go by. Well, I'd like to do just that. But unfortunately, it's my considered opinion that you happen to be dead wrong. Well, you're entitled to your opinion, sir. Lieutenant, I'm glad you called me in on this. I'll need my assistant to take notes. Uh, if I may ask you, why are you so sure? Well, I'd like to check it out in my own way, but I can tell you this. I'm convinced that what you've just shown me was murder. Webster, sorry I missed tea. Gunpowder tea in a cardboard cup. Lemon, no sugar. You get A for the semester. Gunpowder tea? Oh, yeah, it'll give you a real blast. <laughs> Care to join me for tea, Mr. Burke? You go ahead and enjoy your party, Mr. Vickers. You still think I'm making a job for myself, don't you? You said it, not me. Hello, Matt. Hello, Stoney. Sit down. Mr. Vickers wants to ask you a few questions. I remind you, anything you may say might be held in evidence. Now then, tell us your name. Matt Elder. Is that your tribal name? No, sir. My family name is Black River. Where are you from? Arizona, near Tempe. How long have you been with the rodeo? 
You mean the specialty act? Yes. Over a year, say, a year and a half. Where'd you learn to shoot bow and arrow? Back when I was a kid. What happened that made you miss the target? I forgot to put dust in my hands. I pulled back, and the arrow must have slipped before I was ready. You know the man it hit? No, sir, I do not. You know he died of the wound? Yes, the guard told me. Do you always hold a bow like that? How do you mean? Pointing upwards, then leveling out. Sometimes. Isn't that an unusual way to hold a bow? I learned it back on the reservation from an old man. Was he by any chance oriental? I don't remember. Where do you keep your bow? In the truck with the other stuff. Anatawa Nihongo Ohanase Masuka. I don't speak. You speak Navajo? No, sir. Comanche? Spanish and American. I left home when I was a kid. Your family still live near Tempe? No, sir. They're all dead. Yes, sir. Nobody knows you. Mr. Bristol knows me. Rodeo people know me. Where'd you work before you joined the Rodeo Act? I bummed around in Mexico. Who knows you? Margo. Who's Margo? Margo Tecas. Her old man owns the Act. Now, he knows me. How long have they known? A long time. Way back from the reservation. Now, Margo went to mission school. Did you go to mission school? No, sir. Then there's no record. Margo knows me. They keep records nowadays on reservations, Mr. Vickers, but years ago, kids ran away and nobody cared. There are plenty of Indians work in rodeos from here all the way up to Canada. The only record they have is the Army. You have a police record? No, sir. Army? I told you I lived in Mexico. He told you? Margo and the father can identify him. Now charge him with murder or let him go on an accident report. Mr. Vickers, can you hold him a few more hours? The judge makes us come up with a good reason. I want to see the bow he used, and I want to question Margo Tegas. And then will you let him go? If I don't find what I'm after, let him go. Are you going to lock me up? I'm holding you until tonight. This isn't the bow he was using. You're sure it is? Miss Takers, we saw it on television. It was longer with a spring curve. This is Matt's bow. Miss Takers, this is a professional sports bow. It's made of laminated cedar. The one he was using was Japanese, probably made of hard bamboo. Mister, I don't know what you're talking about. How long have you known Matt Elder? Since we were kids. How long has he been working in the act? He showed up about... A year ago, say a year and a half. What happened out there in the arena? Why did he miss? Matt's a good shot, or I wouldn't stand in front of him. He had eaten something earlier. He forgot to put dust on his hands. He pulled back, and the arrow must have slipped before he was ready. Did he tell you to say that? No, he did not. But you discussed it. Well, right after. We tried to figure what happened. Webster, read Matt Elder's statement. I forgot to put dust on my hands. I pulled back and the arrow must have slipped before I was ready. Now read what Miss Taker said. He forgot to put dust on his hands. He pulled back and the arrow must have slipped before he was ready. I told you we talked about it. You're sure he didn't tell you what to say? I told you no. Take it easy, Margo. Well, what's he trying to prove? Nothing. He's just checking so they can let Matt go. Mr. Vickers, uh... You believe what you want. Margot said that's Matt's bow. It's not the same bow, Mr. Burke. And by coincidence, we can't produce the arrow either. What's that go to prove? Possible concealment of evidence. Lieutenant, you gonna hold a man on a charge of murder because an arrow got thrown out with the trash? What makes you so sure this isn't the same bow? You called me in as a weapons expert, remember? How can you tell? A Japanese bow has a characteristic curve. It's used by men who believe in the ritual culture called Zen. Zen? It's an oriental philosophy, a way of life. The Zen masters apply their teaching to all fields of endeavor. Flower arrangement, swordsmanship, archery. When the bow is fully drawn, it's supposed to encompass the mystery of nature. Remember how the man stood out there a moment before he fired the arrow? How he cracked the string? 
The sound that makes is supposed to banish malevolent spirits. But he could have been testing it for strength. Miss Takers, would you draw this bow? I'm not strong enough. I'll do it. Could you show us how an Indian sets an arrow and shoots? Yes, sir. An arrow. And you see, the arrow is kept at eye level. But in the arena, remember, the archer held the bow high over his head, brought it down to eye level, like that. And that's the way the Zen masters draw a bow. But he told you he learned to handle a bow like that from an old man. All I'm saying, Mr. Burke, is that the man who calls himself Matt Elder is a Zen archer. Lieutenant, I don't want to get across you, but all you've got to go on is the opinion of one man and no proof. It's an opinion I respect. Well, I don't. I say it's beside the point, and I'm ready to dig down, come up with a good lawyer who'll knock it all apart in two short seconds. You've got no motive, no reason for it. Let him go. Even if he is trained as a Zen archer, that doesn't rule out an accident. Of course, ready to let him go on a minimum bail. What if he jumps bail? He hasn't tried to run out so far. The judge will have a quick hearing and he'll be cleared. I think Stoney's right. We can't hold him without some concrete evidence. I'm sorry, I'll have to recommend release. No hard feelings, Mr. Vickers. Oh, why should there be, Mr. Burke? Well, you do what you have to do, Lieutenant. But you won't mind if I... Go at it on my own? I, uh, I can't help you officially. Then we'll have to go at it unofficially. Matt Elder used this inflection when he said he'd been with the act over a year, say, year and a half. Margot used the same inflection when she said he showed up over a year, say, year and a half. The law isn't interested in the subtleties of inflection. Mr. Vickers? Uh, this yes? Mr. Painter, sir, with an object of interest. Uh, some of the voices tell me that you're a gun collector. Not just guns, all kinds of weapons. We have a private museum at the Institute. Oh, well, I got to wondering, sir, if you'd be interested in purchasing a genuine historical antique. I'm always interested in history. What is it? Well, sir. I stopped by a reputable pawnbroker's to help a destitute friend redeem a pledge, and I noticed this miniature piece in a red velvet case. It's an original Derringer, sir. You know, the famous lady gun of the Frontier Saloons. If you'll look closely, sir, you'll see engraved upon its chambers the personalized initials of its legendary owner. A, B, O. And B. Oakley, sir. You know, Annie Oakley, famed in all the barroom ballads. I'm afraid the pawnbroker misled you, Mr. Painter. Misled me, sir? ABO is the signet of the manufacturer, Angstrom Brandt Ordnance. This model was made in 1928. Annie Oakley died in 26. Is that a fact? I hope we didn't get stuck for too much. It's 31 bananas, that's all, sir. It uh, so happens we don't have a... Derringer in the collection? Mr. Vickers. Webster. I'll make you out a check for 35 bananas. Four bananas, clear profit. Well, thank you, sir. If you don't mind, sir, could you make that a cash transaction? You see, my bank's back in Mission Ridge, South Dakota, and uh, these folks around here are a bit slow to process all that paperwork. 35 cash. Webster, they're going to release Matt Elder any minute. I want you to shadow him. Keep in constant touch by phone. Right, sir. They let you go? Yes. Are you going away? Yes. 
Tonight? San Francisco. Take me with you. No. They might be watching. A lot of ships sail out of San Francisco. You won't get on one and go back? I said I'd wait for you. Why can't I go with you now? No. But I want to. I gave you my word. I gave you money. You promised to do as I asked you. I don't want to lose you. Then do as you're told. here looking for that bow. I told him you used the sports bow. The man they called in, Vickers, he's got an idea of what happened. Are you going to burn that? Yes. Wouldn't it be better to hide it? No, I've got to burn it. It's done its work. Don't go. Please, not yet. If anyone asks for me, tell them I went to Mexico. It's cherry wood with an iron tip. And the bow was curved exactly as you said. When he burned it, did he hold it up in a kind of ritual? Yes. They do that when the bow served its purpose. But why did he go to such trouble? He had to bring the bow and the arrows all the way from the Orient. Well, this wasn't just a murder. Not for money. That certainly wasn't a spur-of-the-moment attack. It was important to him that it be carried out in a particular way. A death ritual? Precisely. Tony, Margot's father, he wants to see you. Mr. Takis, <clears throat> alone. You go on, Stoney. Cody and I'll get things packed to head on over to Phoenix. Sit down, Mr. Takis. It's about my daughter, Margot. She's... she's gonna run away. Run away? With him, you know. 
Matt Elder. Well, she's old enough to take care of herself, isn't she? Not with him. Why not? She... She knows. She knows what? She lied about him, Stoney. She said he'd been with us a long time. That we've known him for years. You saying you don't know him? He's been with us since early summer. Six months, that's all. Before that, neither one of us ever set eyes on him. Why did she lie? He's got her like that. He had both of us. He knew how to work the act. He brought in some money. You took money from him? I let him help out. You better tell Lieutenant Bowen. No, Stoney. He'll arrest her. She didn't know what she was doing. She's young. I'm asking you, Stoney. Please, don't get her a police record. Help her. Please help her. Where are they headed? I copied this from a letter he sent. That's the name of a place in San Francisco. You won't call the police? She's an accessory, Mr. Takis. Give her a chance, then. I'll do this much. I'll see she gets a chance to come back and tell the truth herself. All right, Stoney. Good. Thanks. I've got an apology to offer you, Mr. Vickers. You were right. Matt Elder had something to hide. I was hoping we could work together on this. Oh, sit down, Stoney. Thank you. I don't mind telling you I'd have bet everything I own that Matt Elder was an American Indian. And you weren't far wrong. American Indians are of Mongolian descent. They have the same broad cheekbones, the epicanthic fold on the eyelids. Back in some ancient migration, they probably came over by way of the Aleutian chain from Tibet, the Gobi Desert. Well, I, uh, I know that's Oriental. But what do you make of it, Webster? This is a Chunchung dialect. Right. It spreads from Tibet south into Laos. <laughs> what does it say? It's written to a Zen master asking permission to visit a temple gallery. And where is it? Well, it gives a street but no city. San Francisco is a city. Where'd you get this, Tony? From Margot's father. He, uh, he told me they've been covering for Matt Elder, or whoever he is. This must be his name at the bottom. Yeah, Sumeru Kosaka. Mr. Vickers, you're uh, connected with the police. Is there any way to help the girl without... Well, even though she's been holding back the facts? Well, we can try to help her help herself. It's possible she'll get a break if she comes in and tells the truth. Can you persuade her to see Lieutenant Bowler? Well, she's getting set to follow Elder up to Frisco. Well, maybe we can stop her. Maybe we can. Where's Margo? She's gone. She follow him? You've got to get her back, Stoney. Please get her back. Well, we'll do what we can. Mr. Webster, get the maps and weather and file a flight plan to San Francisco. Notify Lieutenant Bolin we're leaving his jurisdiction. Tell him we've got a lead. If we're right, we'll credit him with the arrest. Hope you don't mind flying at the crack of dawn, Stoney.
My name is Mark Vickers. This is Mr. Burke and Mr. Webster. Yes? We're looking for a young woman. Her name is Margot Takus. Can you help us? There is no one here by that name. Has anyone come here looking for a man named Sumeru Kosaka? No. Well, I guess she's not here yet. Is Sumeru Kosaka here? Yes. Do you know him? He is a traveler from Chungchung. He was educated by a friend of mine, the Zen master Hideki Sachu. He asked our permission to enter the temple to contemplate. We have given him our hospitality. With all respect to your friend who taught him, we have reason to believe Sumeru Kosaka is misusing the Zen teachings. We have reason to believe he's dangerous. Dangerous? I'm not a police officer, but I've been an inspector. Sumeru Kosaka killed a man. Yes, he told me. It was an accident. The authorities released him, but death left a mark. That is why he came here. And you believe he's innocent? The law believes he is innocent. I believe the law. He lied to the law. He told them he was from Tempe, Arizona. He told them he was an American Indian. I am not his judge. Will you give us permission to wait for the girl? This is a temple of peace. Well, at least let us wait here and warn her. May I ask you, why are you so certain the Samurai Kusaka is dangerous? We are certain he committed murder. He follows the teachings of Zen. No, he uses the teachings of Zen to his own purposes. He used the ceremonial bow belonging to his ancestors to kill a man deliberately. He used iron-tipped arrows brought from the Orient. He concealed the bow from the authorities, then burned it in the Zen ritual. We're certain he committed a ritual murder. Why couldn't it have been an accident, as he says? He said his fingers slipped on the bowstring. Yes. He would have felt something wrong as he tested the bow. Test him. See for yourself. You have a Zen gallery here in the temple? Yes. Invite him to shoot. He missed the target by 30 feet and struck Gordon Lucas in the throat. See if he makes mistakes and misses the target. Go to Sumeru Kasaka. Invite him to the gallery. I will meet him there. I do not like to test a man without his knowledge. But I sense in you a sincere belief. You are telling me the truth as you understand it. Sumeru Kasaka did not tell me the man was killed by an arrow. You may observe from the iron window, as I find out for myself how he handles a bow. And often I have the pleasure of sharing our gallery. Will you shoot first? One arrow to awaken the air. Then I ask the pleasure of watching you.
warn her not to come in. Now, wait. If she tells him we're here, there's no telling what he'll do. I was afraid you'd go away. You don't care about the police. They don't know I'm here. You don't care if they pick me up, question me. All you care about is the way you feel. I care about you. You caring so much is going to start people asking more questions. I'm out of it. They cleared me. I'm free. Does that mean you're free of me? Free of you, Margot. I don't want you following me. Please, don't make me go. I'm telling you, I don't want you here. <laughs> well, you told me a lot of things. You said you wanted us to be together. You said you needed me. I needed you to help me, to help me kill a man. I did. I helped you. And do you think that gives you the right to hold on? It gives me the right to be with you. It gives you nothing! Do you think that we're partners in crime? Do you think I'm a common murderer? I don't care. My father is dead. My brother is dead. My father was a man of honor on the council of Chongjin. And that man came into the government, Gordon Lucas. He accused my father. He called him a thief. He dismissed him from public office like a dog. My father committed suicide. And my brother followed him. That bow belonged to my father. Those arrows belonged to my brother. And I gave them to Gordon Lucas. Do you think that you had anything to do with it? I helped you. Go away, Margot. He'll kill her. On the other side and back it up. Take care of the girl. Here, get her out of here. Mr. Vickers is in the back of it. Broken bones. Yes, sir. I'd say you know about weapons. All kinds. Well, if it's all the same to you, I think we'd better call the police. Quick. 
Will I give Margot a break? Well, that depends on the jury. She told the truth. I'll do what I can. Here's your expense envelope. Give it to Margot's father. Mr. Vickers, the tower just had a call from the government station at Lansing. They've had a misfire on a test missile, and they need a weapons expert to disarm it. Can you tell them we're on our way? Bye, Lieutenant. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Stay with him, Stoney. Stay with him, Mr. Vickers. Thank <laughs> you.